Okay, so all right, so we'll start. So our text taken from uh, Matthew chapter five verse seven. So welcome to our adult Sunday school here in uh, in our church building. All right, so now we are on on our um, fifth uh, fifth beatitudes, uh, Matthew chapter five verse seven. All right, so. The um, fifth beatitudes will be like this. Uh, Blessed are the merciful, right? For they shall receive mercy. All right, so in the other uh, Bible translation, you will see different words, English words that they use. And uh, instead of using merciful, they use different uh, words. And this is what I taken from easy to read ver- version. So this version was used only for people who are deaf, who are mute. So they, they, uh, they use this for sign language so people can, can understand what in this version is all about. So this is what the version is uh, saying in this ver- uh, version. What great blessings are, uh, there are for the people that give mercy to other people. All right, so very straightforward, you know. So it means there is a great blessings that there if a person or if people give mercy to to their neighbors. Okay. So in the final four beatitudes that we studied, you know, from verses one to to six, right? Blessed, uh, blessings are conferred on those who live in alignment with the values of God's reign. So God wants us to know his expectation inside the kingdom of God. So while we are on earth, we are so fortunate to know the will of God through the Bible. And uh, we, are, we are being educated so that someday... When we go to God's kingdom, we already studied this while, while we're living on, on this world. As God's people, show mercy and allegiance. Enact peace and justice and live with the resulting persecution. They show their alignment with God's care for those most destitute. So during the war, you will, you will not find mercy. And uh, persecution, aggression, you will not see mercy because people who hate peace, who hate um, godly um, character and activities, they don't like those kind of things. So if a person have hate in, in, in their hearts, there is no mercy. That's why God... Um, wants us to know the opposite of the word hate uh, and mercy. Uh, Hate, love, and compassion. So those are the opposite of, of, um, of hate. So the, the Bible, even the New Testament mentioned that if you show mercy, then you will receive mercy. If you show hate to people, then you will receive the same thing. So the uh, harmony between their actions and God's kingdom ensure they will receive mercy. And not only they will receive mercy, they will see God, all right? And be called God's children. And that they are already, already receiving the kingdom here on earth. So once we, we hear and accepted these uh, teachings of the Lord, then we will, we already received the kingdom in our hearts when we receive the Lord as our Lord and Savior. So what is the meaning of this fifth saying that blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy? So the meaning is one thing that is common to the poor, poor in spirit, almost similar. Uh, the meek and those who hunger for righteousness is that their life is not self-sufficient, but looks outward for help. So they understand mercy for, 
for they know their own inadequacies, dependence, weakness, weaknesses, and incompleteness. Right? So, and when they receive gracious and merciful bounty from the king, they in turn know to show mercy to others, and showing mercy to others includes both the forgiveness of the sin, of the sinners, and the compassion for the suffering and the needs. We have not been showing mercy by God, but we we been forgive uh, our sin. You know, so like we are being cleansed for all our iniquities. They are called blessed because they place showing mercy above their own rights. They take no hostile against, stand against people in need, but try to show kindness to others and heal wounds. It is not that they are merciful by nature, but because they have been shown mercy and live in constant dependence on the Lord. So, there are so many examples of being merciful to others. By their action, you will see how they are merciful. They are kindness, they are hospitable, they are lovable people, they are not judgmental, they are not... um, They will not accuse you. They will not say bad words to you. So they always show mercy to people. If you see people hungry, then you will give them food to eat. If they are feel cold during this um, winter time, so you give them clothes. If you have, if you can give them. Right? So... There are so many ways to express being a merciful person. Because God is merciful, so we have to imitate God as merciful God. And because they they understand mercy, we understand mercy as Christians, and show mercy to others, and the word from God is that they shall obtain mercy. If you give mercy to people, you will receive mercy. If you give happiness to people, then you will receive happiness too. They will receive mercy not because they did enough good deeds, but because they understood how important mercy is in their own spiritual pilgrimage. And having entered into the state of grace, were eager to share it with others. So they learned to forgive others because they were constantly being forgiven. If we are being forgiven to our sin, excuse me, then we're, we're, then when we, we are also easily to forgive others. If God forgives us, and through forgiveness we become merciful, because God is merciful to us when we are sinners, then God forgives our sins. So if God forgives us, we also been also the same thing. We are not harsh to people. We are not rude to people, right? They learn to show mercy to others because they were being shown mercy every day. So what the Beatitudes, blessed are the merciful means. So this is how we show mercy. When we love someone in this manner, we have many opportunities to shine God's light and grace in the world. And let's choose to do so mercifully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Among all of Jesus' teachings, his Sermon on the Mount is thought to be his most famous among his preaching while Jesus was on earth. And we can find it in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. 5, 6, 7, three chapters of the Gospel of Matthew. Preaching upon a mountainside overlooking the Sea of Galilee with his disciples gathered around him and a crowd of curious people before him. Jesus detailed how to live a life fully pleasing to God and in perfect alignment with God's will. So here, God, the Lord prepared, prepared us to be like Him, to be like God, to be merciful to others. So in essence, Jesus is telling us how we should live in an encouraging manner. So 
being merciful is being an encouragement to others. So that is what it means. So if we are discouraged people, how we encourage people if we are discouraged, right? So we are not good example to others. So we have to be encourager, not to be discourager. Discourager is a different word. Discourager is one of the negative words in our uh, in our language, you know, both in English, both in, in our own languages. So we can enjoy this life of blessedness. If a people maintain this kind of lifestyle in their lives, they will consistently receiving blessings, being blessed people. And the question is why people who didn't believe in God receive a lot of material possession in this world. Are they blessed? It's a different kind of acquiring wealth in this world. Because even people who didn't believe in God, they are millionaires. They are billionaires. Atheists who acquire a lot of wealth in this world, but they don't believe in God. So it's a different kind of acquiring wealth. But if a person believes in God, then Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and everything will be given to you as you need, not as you want. There are two different kinds of words, need and want. Need, it's totally like, the, it's like you really, really need those kind of things. But want is luxury. I want iPad. I want house and lot. I want this. I want car. I want everything want is luxury. But need is necessity. So God gave you the basis of your life as a necessity, which is food on the table every day, clothes to wear, and a shelter to, to live. So those are the things that God gave us to live in this world. And if we have those things, it's enough for us. We don't need to think about to acquire more wealth. More, 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 more. The more we get, the more we become far away from God, right? So people in this world looking for material possessions. That's why the more people gaining a lot of wealth, their hearts will become different towards their neighbors. The more they become rich people or acquiring more wealth, they become more more uh, what you call that in Tagalog like this it's like they they become greedy instead of giving to people in need right so the you know, majority majority of the rich people that I know when I was in the Philippines they are different people one time um, I remember during my my ministry I was uh, destined to one of these place, and I, o- I only come there on a Friday night up to Sunday evening. So I slept in their house, big house, mansion, right? So while we are in the dining table, um, having dinner with, with the owner of the house, and they have two servant maid who prepare the foods. And when in a sudden, there is, there is someone who press the, the, uh, the call bell during, during our uh, supper time. And then the owner of the house said to the, uh, to, to the servant, can you please check who is, in the, who is there? And then, they, and then the, the, the woman mentioned the name. It, he is a pastor, and and I know that that man. I didn't say anything because I, you know, I don't have <laughs> the right to tell because I was only a guest. So the owner of the house said, like, oh, he cannot he cannot come here with us because he's not invited. So the man is standing outside waiting, and then the owner of the house said, um, you may come back. Uh, next day or other day because they're having dinner now. I feel so ashamed to myself because he's a pastor, he's a minister. 
And then he just went home like that. So if I am the owner of the house, I will let the pastor come and then have a dinner with us. But they are rich. Right? So I don't know. I don't know what to say. I was speechless. And they are a Christian. And that is the sad part. They are Christian, but I was there. Don't know what to say. <laughs> right? So, what about if that minister or preacher is hungry at that time? That's the reason maybe because maybe the minister knows that I was inside and he wants to be with me, having a good time or, you know, visiting at the same time. I feel so ashamed. I didn't say anything. Right? So, I hope this is not happened in our, uh, in our uh, circle that what about if the Lord himself <laughs> come on that time in the, in the form of a human being? And somebody's knocking and then you didn't let the person in and then have dinner with us and you missed the, the chance, Right? Because the, you know, the book of Revelation saying that I'm standing in the door knocking. If someone enter, open the door and let me in, I will dine with the person. Right? So this is how one of the example of being a merciful is like you don't, you don't pick and choose what you want or what, what, what you will be. So, so they will say you have no, he has no appointment. It's like business, right? So, so for us, it's very shameful when, when we exercise those kind of things, even though sometimes there is no, no appointment. But if, if they are our brothers and sisters, and it's in the middle of, what about in the middle of winter? Like so much snow outside and the person is, you know, shivering with, with the weather and, and wants to come and have a fellowship with you, what, what you will do? You just turn away the person or just say, come back next time? So Jesus is telling an example about one of his uh, a story that, that if you love your, your neighbor, if you love your children, then if someone, like for example, if you're one of your friends ask food in the middle of the night and you are sleeping with your family, and your uh, friend knocking on the door outside of your house, and, and your friend told you, uh, please, can you lend me some bread? Because I don't have any at home. I have visitors in my house in the middle of the night, and I don't have prepared food to give to my visitors. Can you please lend me? And then you will say to your friend that, oh, come back next time, the next day. I, we are so already sleeping already, right? So, it's not, it's not one of a good example of being merciful to your, to your friend or to your neighbor. And then the Lord said, if you are merciful to others, if you, if you are kind and if you, are, if you love your neighbor, you will get up and you will give the bread that he asked, give it to them, and then you go back to sleep, right? So this is one of the example of what Jesus is telling us, that this is where we find the beatitude, blessed are the merciful, you know, only one act of kindness and you will be considered merciful. Blessed are you. And the full verse is, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Because one day, we will experience them, we will experience the same situation one day. Because our life is like a cycle, it's like a wheel. One day we are in the top, one day we are in the bottom. It's like we never say bad things to poor people. We never say, we, we, we didn't rid, ridicule them. We didn't despise them. Because one day, who knows, we become like them, begging in the streets. And then sometimes people, people when they see beggars on the streets, they said, I don't want to talk to you. You're so dirty, filthy. Right? It doesn't matter if a person is filthy or dirty. We are human beings, right? And then if we have spared enough money or food, we can give it to them. Why not? You know? So because one day, if things happen to us, we become poor, 
because we lost our job, we lost everything we have, what will happen to us? Right? So, what does the Beatitude, Blessed are the Merciful, really mean? And who are the merciful? And what does it mean to be shown mercy? All right, so what is mercy? All right, in, in, um, the word mercy is defined as compassion or forgiveness shown toward someone whom it is within one's power to harm or punish. If, if a person is full of authority and you, you command you know, people to do things, but if a person didn't show mercy, then something is lacking because one day it will come back to a person whether a person is powerful or ordinary person for example a judge might show mercy on a criminal offender by granting a more lenient punishment such as community service instead of prison time for example if an accused person killing someone but because of what he did, he's trying to defend himself against a killer. And instead of a killer kill him, he killed the killer. So when he is facing the judge, and the judge understand that it is really a self-defense, so the judge decided that instead of giving him a life sentence, I will reduce the sentence. Instead of I'm giving you 15 years of imprisonment, I will give you 10 years because you say everything according to your hearts, right? So that is considered being a merciful person, right? So the Greek use word for mercy and merciful in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 is in there is eleo, the first one, eleo, E-L-E-E-O, or elimon, E-L-E-E-M-O-N. So there are two different Greek words from the original Greek word Elios, E L E O S, right? So all of these three words, Greek words, means to have compassion, right? Or show pity to another who is in deep need. So this is the meaning of being merciful, right? Pity, compassion to another one who is in deep, deep need or deep, deep trouble. So, is God merciful? Yes, right? The Bible, the scripture says that God is a merciful God. We know God is merciful and claims that truth about himself. When he passed in front of Moses in the Mount Sinai, God proclaimed in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 7, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. So he punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generations. See? Until today, we're still part of this God's revelation to Moses. So in the Bible, God repeatedly shows mercy toward his rebellious and sinful people, the, the nation of Israel. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating the, forbid, the forbidden fruit, from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, God could have destroyed them easily. But instead, he exiled them from the garden. Did you see God is so merciful, both for their protection and creation, right? God said, if you eat the fruit of the forbidden tree, you will die. But God didn't kill them instantly. They will die in the flesh. Right? That is what God told them. You will die, but not instantly. But Adam and Eve, they live more years, right? Before they died. But God said that they will die. And it happened. 
right? But still, God is merciful. Even though the human, the first human being break the the commandment of God, but they still living, but living with pain, hardship, inconvenience. That is the disobedience um, result of their action. So when the people grew impatient in the um, uh, going to the promised land, when they are in the desert around the Mount Sinai in Egypt, anxious over how long Moses took on Mount Sinai and turned instead to worship a golden cup. The people lose their patience. Right? God was furious at their lack of faith and loyalty. But he showed mercy on them and did not destroy them. Moses plea to God and said, Lord, don't destroy them because the nations of, of this world will know that you are the one who took them from the, na- from the nation of slavery and after you deliver them from the house of slavery, then you will kill them in the desert. And then people of this world will say that your God is, is not a merciful God. See? So that's why God listened to Moses. Right? God showed mercy on them and did not destroy them. Exodus chapter 32 to chapter 34. So God also showed mercy when he sacrificed his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross to pay our sin, death, and create a path for us to eternal solution or salvation. So Jesus, as part of the, uh, the triune God or the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one, also is merciful. And as his followers, people called Christians in our time, we are to emulate God or Jesus, the, our Lord, and strive to be like him in every way possible. So even though we can never be Jesus, no one can be Jesus can be like Jesus at all costs. That's why Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Jesus. What, that, what does it mean? So it means that we imitate the Lord as we, the best we can, we can, we can be. But we, 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 we cannot be like the same as Jesus. Because Jesus is only one. He's the only one. He is our rabbi, he is our uh, Lord, and but Jesus only said to us, just be like me as I followed God, my Father in heaven. So we are not expecting to be perfect because no one, no one lives in this world as a perfect being. We are sinners who are forgiven by God, but we, are, we do the best we can to follow Jesus' ways. You know? And certainly we are to consider him, our role, our, our Lord Jesus Christ being our role model and do our best to mimic his ways and obey his teachings. So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 to 13, when the Pharisees asked why Jesus ate with sinners, he told them, it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick, right? But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, right? Not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Right? So this is the mystery of God. Everything that the world sees is different than in God's, in God's eye. Why are those who are merciful blessed? If you practice being a merciful person, you will bless. You are considered blessed person. Not all the people will become blessed or blessed. Because you will become blessed if you practice these things. The full scripture tells us those who are merciful are blessed because they will be shown mercy. It seems we can infer from this that if we show mercy to other people, even 
and perhaps especially those who do not deserve this mercy, then we too will be shown mercy by the Lord our God, even though we are sinners and do not deserve God's mercy. So in, in, it's the same concept that our Lord Jesus Christ expressed in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, about forgiveness. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So this is also a part of the Lord's Prayer, 6.12 of the, of the Gospel of Matthew. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Right? So being blessed means not only receiving benefits and provisions, but also a state of inner peace and satisfaction inside our hearts, a soul contentment, our soul satisfied with the word of God and feeling of happiness. You have peace of mind, you have happiness, you have contentment. Not only we are blessed by the fact that God will show us mercy, but we are blessed by the good and right feeling we enjoy when we heed our Creator and His wishes and will for us. If we live uh, by the grace of God, we will bless, we will become blessed forever until the end of our lives. The Bible tells us humans were made in the image of God, Genesis 1.27. And therefore, it's a good feeling when we reflect that image in every sense of the word by mimicking and practicing behaviors and attribute, attributes that are godly and good. So when we are merciful, as being forgiven, just, just, or righteous, true, and compassionate, we enjoy a close kinship with the Lord. We become closer to God when we live on these traits, godly traits. We become more closer to God. We can, we can, uh, we can talk to God and God is listening with us. We are like child that close to their parents. And then if we following God's wishes from us, then God is always listening to our prayers. And what about the people didn't pray to God? They only pray during hard time, troubles. We have to pray to God every single of our time of our life, every minute of our time. If we are not busy doing nothing, and that is the right time to, to pray and find a place to talk to God. If you are not uh, sleeping in the night time and you, you do the best you can to sleep, use that to pray and talk to God. Have you experienced sometimes that you cannot sleep in the night time? Right? You want to sleep but you cannot sleep and use that moment to talk to God. It's like, have conversation to God. It's like you are talking to a friend. Do, you, do to God. Tell God, God, you know what? This is what I've done from the past. 15 years ago, this is, this is me now. Look at me now. You know, like, tell him. Talk to him. It's like, it's like talking to no one is listening to you. You can talk to God even in your own mind. You don't need to kneel down and standing and go to a different... Whenever you are, just close your eyes and talk to God through your thoughts, through your thinking. And God will honor that because the Lord said, I will be with you whenever you are. I am with you. I am, I am with you whenever you are. So we don't need to be like the Pharisees that they want to go to the... Uh, public places and stand up there so that people will see them talking, praying and then they want praise from other people. Us as Christians, we, we don't need to do that. We just do whatever we can. For example, if we are in trouble, 
Stop and close your eyes and ask God's guidance right away. If you are inside the bus, for example, close your eyes and pray. Who knows that there is an accident or something happened on, on, on the way and God will spare you, right? But people, if, if they don't pray, there is no communication from God. What else did Jesus teach about mercy? When Jesus healed the man possessed by many demons in Mark chapter 5, the man was overcome with joy and gratitude and wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus had another job for him, urging the man to go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Right? This man became a preacher to his own town. You know, the Lord didn't want him to come with him in his journey, but the Lord used him to be a speaker to his own town. People will believe on the Lord because of this man's testimony. So what about if in us, we want to follow the Lord during that time, but God, the Lord told us, come, go home, and tell the people about what God do to you. Right? You will bring more people than you following Jesus. Right? So that is most important. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 to 27, Jesus told the people a parable about a servant who received a generous gift of mercy from his ruler. The servant owned the ruler a massive amount of money. And he and his family were to be sold to repay the debt. But when the servant begged the ruler for patience, the ruler forgave the debt entirely. This illustrates the kind of mercy God has for us in creating a path to salvation for a people vastly undeserving. If God pardon us, forgive us to all our debts and sins, so was what we also do to our neighbors. So what are some ways we can be merciful today? Mercy is not only forgiveness, but compassion, tenderness, and kindness. There are so many ways we can exhibit mercy today, even if we feel we are powerless. It is important to know that everyone who believes in our Lord Jesus Christ has the power of the Holy Spirit alive within them. Because we are all united in God, we all carry a piece of that power together for the greater good. So therefore, whenever we shine God's light in the world through compassion, kindness, empathy, and care, we do God's will and share God's great mercy to people. Jesus said that whenever we visit someone in prison, clothe someone naked, feed someone hungry, or welcome someone in genuine hospitality and care, we are caring for him. We do, we do all, all of those things to our Lord Jesus Christ. Even you gave one person, if a person is hungry and thirsty, you just give them what they need, we do that to the Lord himself, right? Matthew 25, 40. And this is how we should show mercy. When we love someone in this manner, we show kindness to people through God's um, faithfulness. We have many opportunities to shine God's light and grace in the world. And let's choose to do so mercifully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in, uh, in conclusion, uh, this is the application. Here, do the act of showing mercy comes from the genuine spiritual experience. People who know more of God's mercy will be merciful. It is important then that people have a good understanding of the grace of God in their own lives. This will come from the experience of confession of sin, and thanksgiving for forgiveness. And two aspects of the believer's walk that often get neglected. Christians sometimes get to the point of thinking 
that they deserve the grace they have received. And they become then intolerant of others, even judgmental. So the reality of our own spiritual condition and God's provisions must never be forgotten. Alright, so this is the end of the uh, fifth Beatitudes. And next Sunday, we will go on the sixth one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Alright, so any question, any additional, any uh, thoughts to share? Alright? Yeah? Okay? Okay, good. Alright, so if no one wants to add, then let's continue in prayer before we start our service. Okay, Brother Nick, can you lead the prayer before we start our service? Thanks everyone, and we'll see you again next Sunday. God bless you all.